Yes. Okay, you can join one of the other groups. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, just to remind you what happened last week. Um, over the weekend, you were supposed to prepare a procedure for an experiment you're going to do today. You're supposed to design your own simple machine um, and measure the efficiency and the mechanical advantage, right? We also have a quiz. The quiz I'm gonna, before we pass out the quiz though, I wanna ask you to really quickly come up here and write down the vocab words that you learned over the weekend. How many of you went on to Quizlet and took the sample quizzes? The Quizlet? Okay. okay, some of you? Not many of you? Right, the one that you did start in class. Okay, some of you started that and did more over the weekend. Okay, that was a review for the quiz today. So first of all, I want you to come up on the board and just write some of the vocabulary terms that you learned from lessons two and lesson three in the textbook, okay? Anyone can come up, grab a pen. pen. what efficiency is? I'll put what over input what? I'll put work over input work. Okay. Um, what is output force over input force? Mechanical advantage. Good. Okay. What is a wheel and axle? That. Okay. Something which is round and something smaller which is round. And as you turn the smaller axle, it makes the... One of you brought Legos. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you bought, brought Legos. Nobody. Okay. Raise your hand if you brought a screw. Good. I like some of you brought screws. Good. Okay. Um, screw is one of the more difficult ones. Uh, if someone wants to work with a screw, I did bring something that you can use to do the screw, okay? Um, but I'm glad some of you brought that one as well. Okay, which group wants to work with my bicycle? Okay, I think Daniel raised his hand first. Okay, uh, Daniel, who's your lab partner? David, okay. My bicycle is right side out the window. If you can run some, sh some uh, cord, from the bicycle uh, pedals through the window, up through a, silent please, okay. Up through a pulley, then you can use the wheel and axle and the pulley to create a simple machine or complex machine? Complex, complex machine. If it has both a wheel and axle and a pulley, then it becomes a complex machine. Now, you'll notice that the pulleys I have, I have plenty for those of you that want to use them, um, each one has two wheels. Gladi? What does it have? It has two wheels and axles, which means that you can create a complex pulley uh, with two of these systems. Okay? One of the challenges I'd like you guys to experiment with is how you can create pulley systems that have different mechanical advantages. Mechanical advantage of one, mechanical advantage of two, mechanical advantage of three, mechanical advantage of four. Um, and you might find some principles on how you do that using these pulleys, okay? So I'd like you to create that and see how that works. Of course, you may also use what other simple machines? Wedge. Wedge, good. Did anyone bring a wedge? I brought an axe. An axe? Absolutely. Okay. That would be challenging to measure the forces on. We do have Newton scales for measuring forces. So you're gonna to need to measure the input force and the output force, the input distance and the output distance. Um, we also have these, which you can use to 
create systems with wheels and axles and gears. Okay. A gear is simply two wheels and axles with different diameter moving together, right? Um, and if any of you need, we also do have a sack of Legos. Uh, since none of you brought Legos, you can just use those freely and we can collect them all at the end of class period. Okay. Any questions? What are you supposed to do again today? Build the machine. Okay. Then what are you supposed to do? Calculate the mechanical advantage. And then lastly? Okay, but there's something else you're supposed to answer besides the mechanical advantage. The efficiency. You're supposed to calculate the efficiency of your machine. Okay? Um, you have 30 minutes to build, and then we will start discussing your inventions. Okay? Uh, we have scissors up here, we have string, we have tape, and you may start now. Okay? And get a weight, please. Silence. Okay. Get a rubber band and a weight. And get rules. No. Hey, Amanda, why are you recording? Get your rules up. Okay. Okay, can I have everyone's attention? One, two, three. A lot of you are having difficulty attaching the rubber bands to the weights so you can measure the, the force. So, here's how to do it. Practice right now with me. Get your rubber band, get your weight, okay? What you do is you take the rubber band and you wrap it around your finger and create a loop. Then you stick one end through the other end of the loop. Is everyone seeing what I did? Okay. Now the tricky part is then to take that loop, put it onto the end of the weight, and pull it tight before you let go of the loop. Once you pull that tight, it's like a lasso on the end of the weight, and it will allow you to hang the string. So everyone can practice that, and you can do that on your own rather than asking me to do it for you, okay? Thank you. Two, three, okay. Here we have our first. Can I have everyone's eyes, please? Here we have our first successful machine, okay? So we're going to look carefully to see what the components of it are, okay? Um, first of all, we have a pulley. And what am I doing right now? Pulling. What am I pulling? Yeah, the, the weights. I'm pulling the weights? I'm not touching the weights. What am I pulling? I'm pulling on the scale. Why am I pulling on the scale? What happens when I pull on the scale? Okay. Someone come and look at the scale while I pull on it. Okay. So, come on, Claire. What happens to the scale when I pull on it? It goes up, okay? What am I measuring when I pull on the scale? The force to pull that weight. What do we call that? The input force, okay? So I'm measuring the input force. Now what else do I need to measure? Output force. How can I measure the output force? What is being lifted? I'm finished um, if I take the this weight this weight and this weight together and I measure the total actually I can do that right now can, can you bring me another scale okay. if I took this and took that right there I would be able to lift this and measure the Output force, right? What is the output force? Two hundred? Two hundred what? Okay. 
200 GF, that means 200 grams force, but we're not, we're not going to pay attention to that. We're going to pay attention to the other end of the scale, which is 2 Newton. Newtons. Is it exactly 2 Newtons? It's about 1.56. 1.56? Okay, does someone else agree? Is it 1.56 Newtons? What do you say, Grace? Yeah, 1.5 or 1.56, okay. Now, what is my output force again? Look again. This is my input force, I'm sorry. What is my input force? Zero point eight. Okay. Zero point eight input force. Now the second thing that I need to measure is my input distance and my output. How am I going to do that? Bring me two rulers, please. Okay. Grace, come please. Okay. Can you please help? measure the input distance or the output distance. You gonna just hold it like that or are you gonna if you if you're just sticking in the air it's easy to move around. So you're gonna wanna very carefully look at the distance that the bottom moves and then you're gonna wanna very carefully look at the distance this moves. Okay? okay. Put the right next to here. I'm going to tell you when to start. Okay. Okay, it would help to do it on the other side. Yeah. Okay. So, do you see the start distance? The start position? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to move it. Okay. How much distance to the one on the left? Move? What is the output distance? Let me, let me start again. Okay. So let's look at the top of this one. See how far it moves down. We're going to start at 20, right? Okay. Now I'm going to move it down to... You, you, got, you got yours measured right now? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to move this down to 10. Okay, how much did the other one move? Five centimeters. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. I hope you guys were paying attention because your lab report will have to show this for each of your machines to get full credit. Okay? We measured the input force at one point. 1.56 newtons, okay? Excuse me. Okay, we had input force. Was, thank you. Was how many newtons? 1.56 newtons. Input, input, input. 0.8, okay, 0.8 newtons. An output force? 1.56 newtons. Input distance was how many centimeters? We went from 20 to 10, so that would be 10 centimeters. Okay. Output distance? Five centimeters. Okay. So what was our input work? What do we do? How do we find the input work? 0.8 times 10 is 8 what? Joules, correct. Um, and how do we find our output work? We take the output force times output distance. That is 1.56 times 5 is? Seven point. 
eight jewels, okay? I'm sorry? What did I do wrong here? Output work divided by input work, you're right. Okay, so let's flip those over. Okay. 7.8 joules divided by 8 joules equals what? Well, isn't that like 0 0.1 and 0 0.05? So in order to get to joules, it should be a meter, it's not to a meter. You're right, you're right. Okay, um, since we're talking about centimeters, not meters here, we need to convert the... 0 0.78 joules divided by 0 0.08 joules equals what? Calculator, please. Point zero seven eight divided by point zero eight is zero point nine seven five. Zero point nine seven five, which equals what percent? Ninety seven point five percent efficiency. Okay. In order to get full credit on your lab reports, each of you needs to be able to do this. You need to have a way of measuring your input force, your input distance, your output force, your output distance. You need to multiply your output force times your output distance and divide by your input force times your input distance to find the efficiency. Okay. Now what about the mechanical advantage? Output force divided by input force is 1.56 newtons divided by 0.8 newtons equals 1.95. So mechanical advantage is 1.95. Now look at the design of that pulley. Anyone want to hypothesize why that pulley has a mechanical advantage of 1.95? It has two sections of string. Okay. So when I pull this string down by x distance, this string is going to shorten also by x distance, right? But because there's two strings, that x distance is going to be cut in half. half. So if this moves by x distance, this will move by 2x. If my input distance is x, then my output distance is going to be 2x? 0.5x. Okay. The reason is because you have two links to this pulley. Can anyone design a pulley system that has a mechanical advantage of 3? 0.5. 